And when I think that I have arrived, God is quick to allow me to be challenged. And when I'm finding myself ministering, I say, oh, God, what happened there? It's because I have come to a greater awareness and a greater understanding of God's word and God's purpose for my life. I am understanding the apostolic anointing in such a new level of understanding when it relates to my ministry and what God has called me to do as for the body of Christ. And God has begun to open doors. I, I did a service not too long ago at the YMCA. And I am not always good outside the realm of Christendom. And, and, and the safety of the church. But God is growing me up and he's putting me in position. And maybe because I am becoming seasoned in what God is taking me and helping me to understand the purpose and fulfillment of my ministry and my life. I'm not saying I was real comfortable, but I can honestly say that I had the confidence of God like I've never had before. But my confidence was in God and not me. And I thank God, never put your confidence in the flesh. Because when you start putting confidence in this flesh, that's when you're apt to come short. That's when you're apt to allow the enemy to come in to deceive you. And to misguide you. This is when unbelief can really begin to take root in you and begin to grow at a level to where it overtakes you. It's where your enemy will come in and overtake you because you have allowed unbelief in the flesh to have more confidence in what God can do. So God is saying here, it is important for you and I to understand the purpose and the plan of God for our lives. And he says here, this idea of health, he says in John 1 and 2, he says to prosper and be in health. Health is to have sound health. That is to be well in body, but figuratively, it is to be uncorrupt. Understanding true doctrine and be safe and sound and whole when it comes to understanding the word of God. Because the Bible says in the last days, perilous times will come and men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And we are living in that time and we are living in the days of Noah where men are and women are so focused on themselves that they're forgetting about their souls. They're living for the pleasure of sin for a season. And, and, and sin is pleasurable. I would be lying to tell you that sin is not pleasurable. But we also know that it comes with a price. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I thank God, even though the enemy will try to misdirect us and, and mislead us, and I shared with the saints last night, and I'll share this again on today, if we're not aware of the word of God, if we're not being sound and getting the teachings that we need to get, we're going to be misled and misguided and misdirected. I shared with this, I shared this last night, and I'm sure it's, and a lot of them was already aware and been in tune to what had been going on. We begin to see ordinary people living ordinary lives, doing ordinary things and, and, and being part of the society. And at the end of that commercial, they'll say, I'm a Mormon. It's trying to get us to accept a doctrine that is contrary to the word of God. They're using what Timothy says here. Timothy says in this idea of doctrine and when it comes to doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, 
shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And if you think that just because someone get on television and produce a commercial stating, I ride bikes and I go to work and I play and I have a family, that's not doctrine. That's not gospel. That's just life's experience. It has nothing to do with the gospel message. The gospel message has to center around Jesus Christ and him crucified. The gospel message has to be one that is telling the story how God loved a people that he had sent his only begotten son and to redeem them back to himself. And if the message isn't about Jesus and it's simply about the cares and the fears of this life, it's just a fable. It's just something that is trying to draw you away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you're not aware of that, my Lord, you'll get caught up. See, they tell you, tell you that the Mormons have to wear special underwear to get to heaven. That's true. That is part of their teaching. If they don't have their special underwear on, they will miss heaven. If they die without their special underwear on, they will miss heaven. Even That's not gospel either. That is fable, and that is false, and that is untrue. Because if underwears can save us, why will we need the risen Lord to come down to die for us? I know we live in a society that we have to deal with false doctrine and, and understand where this is taking us. And if you haven't got the revelation of it, you need to know that Mitt Romney will be trying to run under the Republican Party in a later time. And he's Mormon. Trying to get society to be acceptable of his religion because that they could accept him as his religion, then they might accept him. Too many times the devil is slick. He's subtle in the way in which he tries to entice us and to draw us into his trap. When it came down to the men of, of history and, and the men of faith who had fallen short, it was always through this enticement. It wasn't, it wasn't something overwhelming. It was always subtle. What he says here. But after their own lusts, shall they heap them up teachers. When God began to set his plan in place, he will begin to design and instruct situations and circumstances in our lives that we might get to where he's trying to take us. But don't think it's always a guarantee that we will go there. Even though God has tried to use and allow things to happen before us, we still have a free will. And sometimes our free will supersedes God's will. And we have to be put back in place from time to time. We have to be reminded from time to time. You need to be still and you need to step back and you need to allow God be who he is. Last night we talked about this throne of authority. I said a lot of times envision this circle. And and, you know, we have circles of friends that we engage with that we communicate with, either daily, weekly, monthly, every couple times a year. They're part of our circle, and we, we embrace them. And then when somebody else that is not part of our circle will try to come in, we put up walls. 
we, 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 we tell them, wait a minute here, you know, you're not at that level with me yet. You're, you're intruding on me. So what happens with us a lot of times 